What's going on everybody, long time no see. Today's video is the long awaited update about a recirculating shower. So when we built our van a couple years ago, we decided to put a recirculating shower in so that we could one, conserve water and stay out longer and you know, have a lesser impact by using less water. But if you've watched our other videos, you know that we've had some ups and downs along the way trying to figure everything out, especially filtering out soap from the system. So if you have not watched our other videos, you may wanna go take a look at those of the installation and our update video where we talked about the maintenance and soap issues. I'll put links in the description below so that you could go check those out real quick. But in the meantime, let's get to our update and what's currently going on with the shower. So unfortunately, this video isn't going to be exactly what many of you may be hoping for, which would be an update on the recirculating shower system, basically us fine tuning it and figuring out ways to make it better work. Instead, today's video is going to be one, we're going to tell you the reasons why we've decided not to continue with the recirculating shower and convert it to a normal shower. We are also going to go over our recirculating shower system with you again. For those of you who may be interested interested in continuing to develop and find this information about the system useful. And then three, we are going to show you how we are converting our shower to a regular shower system. First, let's get into the reasons why we are converting it to a traditional shower. So number one is the UV filter. Our UV filter stopped working. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this right here is our UV filter and it is not working at the moment. This unit costs approximately five to $600 when we were building the van. So the big deal with that is that in order to replace it, it's expensive. We're not exactly sure why it failed, but we know these units aren't necessarily designed for RV or van life use. These things go through quite a beating going down rough roads. The second reason that we've decided to do away with the recirculating shower system is our issues with filtering out soap. So while we do have a pretty robust filtration system, our general bath soaps and shampoos and things like that, because they are petroleum based, tend to clog up the filters very quickly. So lots of you out there have given us great suggestions on how to minimize the soap buildup in the system. One is using a soap like Dr. Bronner's, which doesn't have as much soapiness as, for lack of a better word, as a lot of your general bath soaps and shampoos. Two was adding Epsom salt to the water. And then we've also had lots of great suggestions about different ways to kind of put the system together where you could have multiple tanks where you can kind of use one to rinse off so that that soap isn't going back through your research circulating shower system. All of those are fantastic ideas and we can't wait to hear what some of you guys are doing with that. So if you have those kind of suggestions or helpful things for other people who are looking to build a shower like this, go ahead and drop them in the comments because we definitely think that a recirculating shower is something that's going to be amazing for van life or RV life once they are kind of fine tuned. But unfortunately, we didn't have the time and effort to really figure out the soap issue. And as a result, we kind of really just stopped using this system so much. The third reason is gonna be maintenance. This system does not take a long time to maintain at all, which is cool. The main issue with the maintenance is finding parts. So as you know, in RV life, van life, space is at a premium. So we can only carry so many spare filters and spare parts. Due to the number of filters in our system, it can get kind of pricey to order the filters and we have to go find a place to pick them up, which is not the ideal situation. This system is more expensive than a regular shower because you do have replaceable consumable parts on the shower. And with everything getting expenser, expenser, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good one. That's a great word. It's a new one. With everything getting more expensive, as you guys know at home, it's not one of the things we want to spend our money on. And the fourth reason why we've decided to convert the shower over to a traditional shower is the weather and temperature. A large portion of the recirculating shower system, all of the filters are on the outside of the van. Therefore, our van is really only a three season van and we can't take it into freezing temperatures. Well, we do take it into freezing temperatures, but we basically shut down our shower system and we can't use it when we're in those colder temperatures. By converting it to a traditional system, everything will be inside the van and we can use it in any type of weather. So if you're new here or just curious, I'm gonna go over quickly on how we put together our recirculating shower. First, we're gonna start at our seven gallon reservoir tank. From there, it is pumped out goes through the accumulator and into the spin down filter. From the spin down filter, it then travels through our three bigger filters consisting of 
20, 10, and five microns. Then that water is routed through the UV filter. The hot water goes through our heat exchanger and the cold water goes straight to the shower. From there, it goes all over the user, which is you. Well, it's actually me, not you. That's gonna be kind of weird if it's, if it's you. And the process just repeats itself. As we said earlier, we are gonna leave links to our other videos below as well as a parts list. So if you wanna give this a shot and perfect it, then hey, go for it. All right, so it is time to convert this recirculating shower to a very normal traditional shower. So we are currently in the garage area of our van, and this is where we are gonna start converting it to a traditional shower. So this is where our 33 gallon water tank is located. And then we also have our pump that pumps the water out of this tank. So previously with the recirculating shower and this, they were two completely separate systems. The water in each never touched the water from the other. So hopefully this part won't be too bad of a project. We are essentially going to disconnect a couple of our cold water lines because the hot water line that comes out of the heat exchanger, we're going to leave that as is. We're just basically going to tie the cold water from this tank into the heat exchanger for the shower and then have them both go into a joint line. So we're basically just going to kind of wire it together so that we don't have to change out a lot of the PEX tubing, but we do have to switch out a few pieces and we need to do some three-way junctions in order to combine the two together. So this line right here is our cold water line that goes to our sink and then this is here is the cold water line that comes from the outside tank from the shower through the UV filter. We essentially need to combine these two so that this one will now get water from the tank here and then we'll continue it on and then we'll be able to take the part out and cap it off underneath the van. Okay, so now we have everything torn apart in this cabinet right here. We still need to measure some PEX and connect it to the cold water line. We have removed our UV filter and we have started to pull what leads to under the van. We've pulled that up as well, so making progress. Okay, so we've plumbed the new three ways in. But anyway, we've already got this done, so. So now comes the fun part where I get to remove all the stuff underneath the filters, the spin down filter, the accumulator, and the pump. And once that's out, nothing left to it but to test it out. All right, we're ready to check it all out. Pump coming on. Let's see, we'll check the kitchen first to make sure it still works. All right. Good water flow there. Shower. I'm just gonna go over here to do it. All right. Ooh. Look at that. Now, check and make sure we don't have any leaks and we're good. Okay, so looks like we're pretty dry. Fittings are dry. Looks like uh, we were successful. Okay, so no longer recirculating shower. Yep, just a regular old ordinary shower, but it actually, I think it's gonna work well for us because to be honest with you guys, we don't really use the shower in the van a lot because nowadays that everything's back open from COVID. You know, we shower at truck stops, we shower at campgrounds, we shower when we're staying with friends, you know, so. I just don't shower. And sometimes Jed just doesn't shower, so. Yeah, I don't shower. <laughs> he probably needs one tonight. Thankfully, we're staying at his dad's house, so he'll be able to get one. We hope that our video series has helped some of you out there. I know that we didn't kind of follow through on perfecting it. Hopefully it gives some of you some groundwork to start with and something to improve upon and you kind of know some of the issues with doing a recirculating shower like this. You know, if you want to try a shower, go for it. You can always change it over later. Right, it's pretty simple to change it over. It took us a few hours today to change it over. It wasn't really that difficult. So give it a go. And if you are working on a recirculating shower or want to try a recirculating shower, let us know in the comments below. We're still happy to answer any questions that we may be able to help you with based on our experience of what we experienced with this shower drop them below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible on it okay so that's gonna do it for this video make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and until next time stay, stay wonderful, wonderful. <laughs>